All right, so basically we're going to be starting with just walking through the navigation of the Taiga website and then walking through the duplication of the template that we made and then populating it with your individual work. So if you start off by going to tree.taiga.io and logging in, this will take you to the dashboard. On the right-hand side, you should see Vast Template as one of the projects that you're a member of. If you don't, send me your email and I will add you to it. So this is not only a template, but it also has some example epics, user stories, tasks, and a sprint, so you can explore it and understand the website a little bit better. The main page that it'll take you to once you click on a project will be the timeline, which just shows the chronological activity for the project. On the left side of the screen, you can see the navigation bar. So if you click underneath the timeline, you'll go to the epics tab. And this just shows the progress for each epic. You can also click on the drop down for any of the individual epics and see all of the user stories associated with that epic and their individual progresses based on the tasks completed. If you click on any of the individual epics um, or user stories, you'll see more detail along with the items linked to them. So for example, we clicked on paper one and this shows the user stories associated with it. And then if you click on any of these user stories, it'll show you uh, its details and the tasks associated with it. So if you're working with other people, it's always good to fill out uh, all of the descriptions so that everyone can understand why things exist without having to bug you. It can also help you stay on track if you forget later on down the road why you originally made a user story or a task or an epic. So going back to the navigational bar, beneath the epics, we have the backlog. So this shows you all of your incomplete user stories. Um, the colored circles show which epics they're linked to. Just a side note, you don't have to link user stories to epics. It won't break, but it's good practice too. So again, if you click on any of these, you'll see more details for them. Uh, the backlog is generally where you'll come every two weeks when you want to start and end the new sprint. It's essentially the list of all the work you haven't done yet. So you'll come here to pick the next two weeks worth of work and make a new sprint. Sprints are located on the right side of the screen. This is where you would add a new sprint and then drag and drop from the backlog to populate it. The default time is two weeks and I recommend sticking with that. It's just a good balance of you can predict your work for the next two weeks, but it's not too far ahead that you don't know what's gonna happen. Once you've made a new sprint, you can go to that task board. So you can either click from the backlog or you can hover over the backlog and it'll show the open sprints. The task board is kind of your bottom up view of your work. So instead of thinking top down from the epics, uh, this is kind of where you'll think of the individual tasks that you need to do for, for a two week period. If necessary, you can add tasks here. So this is kind of the bulk insert of tasks. And then as you work on your sprint, you'll move things from new to in progress and eventually to closed. You can customize all of these columns. If you go to admin, attributes, statuses, and then go down to task statuses. If we go back to the task board, another kind of important note that I would mention um, is filtering. So you can just click here and then you can filter on a variety of things. I recommend just right off the bat excluding closed tasks just to keep the task board from being cluttered. And that pretty much covers the general navigation for the website. So to go into kind of the second half of this tutorial um, and duplicating the template and making your own, if you go to the dashboard and then click manage projects, and create project, then click duplicate project and select the VAST template. Name it something like your name VAST, for example, and give it a brief description. If you don't want everyone added to the project, unselect their photos at the bottom and then click create project. And so now it's time to start populating your project. So I would recommend starting with the top-down approach to fill it out. And then generally, once you've done that, working bottom up. Um, so unfortunately, you'll have to bite the bullet and spend some time just managing your project every once in a while. But that's the price of being a little bit more organized. 
And the worst time will be this first time since you're building it up from nothing. But after this, you'll only have to do this every couple of months and it won't be that bad. So starting off, if you go to epics and then click add epic, you can start creating your epics. Again, these are long-term project goals. For example, a paper presentation, quarterly report, et cetera. Uh, in other words, these are the big milestones for your project. So from there, start going into the individual epics and populating your user stories. So again, try to think of little deliverables um, associated with your epics or concrete things that you can complete like an experiment, writing the code for some analysis, for example. So if you make the user stories doing this kind of top-down approach, it will automatically link them to the epics that you create them in. Alternatively, you can go to the backlog and create them as well. Uh, this is a little bit easier for kind of single user stories or you know, if you're doing more of a bottom-up approach, but uh, it's a little bit more time consuming when you're dealing with bulk inserts. So anyways, once you've populated the epics, uh, you can do the same for populating the user stories with individual tasks. Uh, so again, these are the individual nuggets of work that you can do on your own. So for example, fix a particular bug in some code or solve some problem. Uh, if the user stories are kind of later on in the project, you might not know down the line the tasks associated with them. So you can leave them empty for now and you can, you can always fill them in later. Alternatively, you can leave them empty and populate them when you make your sprint. But if you know the tasks ahead of hand, you might as well just fill them out when you, you make the user story. Ultimately, you'll likely end up adding a lot of tasks during your sprint as your work becomes better defined. And so for example, if you go into the sprint, you can bulk insert. So once you have a backlog of user stories, you're pretty much done with the big task management. And now you can start thinking in terms of your two week sprints. So on a biweekly basis, this will be your general workflow. At the beginning of a sprint, you'll make the sprint um, and then add the work that you can complete in the next two weeks. And then for the next two weeks, you'll work out of that task board and try to get everything closed. You can just go ahead and drag over a few user stories and start populating the sprint with the work you think you can do. And then for a two week period, you'll generally focus on the task board. Um, so again, in here, if you, during your sprint, figure out new tasks that you need to add, you can always add them under the individual user stories. And then you just work from here on getting them into in progress and, and close. So then at the end of a two week sprint, hopefully you've completed everything, but if you haven't, that's not bad. You can just reflect on that, figure out why uh, you weren't able to reach all of the work that you thought you would, and then use that to plan the following sprint. Um, every once in a while, just make sure that your Tiger project is up to date with all of your epics and user stories. Um, so for example, if you have a new paper that you decide to write, maybe add that as a new epic. Um, and just generally populate new work as necessary and as it comes up. And then just one last thing. If you go to your backlog, by default, you won't have the graph enabled. And so to enable that, all you have to do is go to admin. Under project, go to modules. And then just put uh, either 0, 0 in both of these fields. Or if you think you can estimate the number of sprints and number of points, you can do that. But I'll just recommend doing 0 and 0. And then if you go back to your backlog, now you'll have a graph showing you your progress. And that's pretty much it. So there's a lot more functionality that we have in detail here. So if you think of something that you wanna do, you can just ask me and I can show you how to do it. Uh, otherwise, this should cover the general navigation of the website.